Hi, my name is Amit. So today I'm going to present top-down design approach with skeleton-based modeling over the conventional bottom-up design methodology. So before we start the session, I have a couple of quick questions for you guys. So I want you to ask yourself, are you really dealing with the assemblies? If yes, how big are your assemblies? How how much time do you spend on rework or redesigning couple of parts, maybe sub-assemblies in, you know, just fixing up the references, right? Are you really using top-down or bottom-up approach? I'm sure most of the guys are, they may not aware with the top-down design approach. Well, so I think today it's a right place for them. So let's say uh, again how do you manage your machine and comp uh, casting parts i am sure uh, most of the people they save as the casting part and rework or redo or something some changes done on the machine component right so i am not going to run with the multiple slides or the bunch of slides but i would like to keep a straightforward agenda in front of you introduction to uh, top-down design approach with skeleton based modeling and what is layout how layout will help you to manage your product structure in fact layout can be helpful or rather skeleton can be helpful where you can claim the space I would I would say in uh, in a different work where you can claim this part will be fixed or aligned or reserved for this specific uh, assembly or part or sub assembly. Again, if you have multiple configurations, how do you manage those configurations? How do you use those configuration in replacing your existing parts or sub assemblies? Right. So this is a quick agenda for AX introduction. Let's jump directly to a model. Well, this is my top level assembly where you find it's quite complex. It's quite huge. Complex in terms of it, it is having more than 200 odd parts and it's quite huge. It becomes difficult when it comes to manage uh, such a huge assembly. I'm sure most of the automobile people they are having assemblies which are too complex than this one. So to move ahead I would like to showcase you. We have with the top-down design approach you can come up with the skeleton. Okay. So my basic agenda for this one is uh, I have certain key parameters which will drive my whole assembly drive my whole assembly in the sense with those three to four dimensions my whole assembly will get changed right without disturbing any any kind of references so if you have a look to this one let me go back to the main assembly so to manage this complex assembly within to play around with all these three four dimensions it's quite hard with a normal bottom-up approach but with skeleton I would like to showcase what is there in the skeleton skeleton is nothing but a representation where it will pull all the references all the concurrent design team will pull references from the skeleton so if I'll edit this from center I have this as an half this is the total length or say width of this whole machine. Then I have this thousand which I would like to consider to my in my design content. 645 and the ninety one distance. Right. So these are the parameters which will drive my whole assembly. Now, skeleton is something which will get enabled with the help of AAX license, that is Advanced Assembly Extension license. Uh, how will you check if you have AX licenses or not? If you go 
on a top level if you go to uh, ax when you say create well uh, we already have one uh, 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 skeleton there in my top level assembly so it will not allow me to create one more but if you have this skeleton model enabled it's grayed out, grayed out over here so you can say that yes AX license are enabled and you can start using this functionality right so coming back to the skeleton there uh, I, I was talking about three to four driving parameters I can go at any point of time and change those parameters but there is again a sophisticated or a better way where you can deal with all these four parameters right so let's say uh, today I am I have created this skeleton but I am not available and some other guys there who is working on this skeleton how would he come to know which are those parameters uh, taken care into this skeleton so the other way is you can create a layout right so layout again is a functionality attached with AX if you go to new file you'll find this notebook notebook it is a newer name of uh, layout layout was a previous name when wildfire series was there so this is a layout where I have defined a simple 2D sketch which says this is a width this is a module distance this is a carriage distance and a module step right so I have created a small chart where a table rather which says this is a parameter which is going to drive now any Creo users I would like to showcase them when this below regeneration icon is green it means that your top level assembly is fully regenerated so if you make any changes any minute changes to any part sketch anywhere in the whole assembly it will pop up in a orange or a red maybe if, if, the, if there is failure into it so coming back to layout let's say I want to change some specific parameters right so I'll go back uh, let, let's change some of the things let's say uh, module width I want it to be 790 carriage distances sorry module distance is around 7, 645 let's make it to 680 carriage distance it's 1000 let's make it to 980 and model setup is 91 I'll change it to 90 right so I'll move back to my top level assembly I could see here it says it is not fully regenerated right so let me reorient to top I'll go back to my skeleton let's see what happens with the skeleton just to showcase let me edit those values okay the current values is still 347 this is 750 and we'll check with this is still 1000 and this one is still 91 I guess yep it's 91 so within a click of regenerate my skeleton will get updated you you will not you will come to know here okay this has become green now let's go here back it's 395 total distance is 3790 sorry for that and this one is 980 this one is 90 right so coming back to top level assembly I just have to hit regenerate and this region rate will update my whole assembly I don't have to worry about what are the references where it is going to break nope because everything is managed all the references are managed by the skeleton right so this is how a skeleton and a layout uh, works together when it uh, in hand in, they go hand in hand actually so but there is uh, there is no compression you can go either with skeleton you can go either with layout but just to showcase the functionality how layout and skeleton can work in a synchronous way i have taken a uh, help of a skeleton as well as the layout
now I have a question for you let's say you have a couple of configurations now most of the people will wonder what are the configurations I would like to say configuration is nothing but you have a different let's say you are working on a project A and there is project B as well so for a project A you can say a motor of ABB is used right and there are different projects running with different machine with different motors I'm sorry with different motors so how do you normally change those I have seen people they right click they delete and they again assemble the different motor but what if I have different multiple configurations so in that case how to create a configuration so configurations are nothing but the interchange assembly so I have three motors one is of ABB which is already installed on my existing top level assembly the second one is of Siemens and the third one is of Emerson all the three machines are of different types different variants right so these are the configurations I can create and again how to create a configurations it's again a license based when you say new assembly there's an option called as interchange assembly subtype under subtype so this will help you to create different configurations now let's say I'm, I have to change a motor I can directly right click and say replace right so this replace will identify okay there are different set of configurations is available for this motor so it will directly jump to interchange assembly right? I just have to see which particular motor I need to pick so I have one for Siemens I have one for Emerson so I can preview this motor let me preview okay this is of Siemens and this one is for immersion so let's say I want to have a Siemens motor I just have to click OK select the motor and say apply so without disturbing any references this will get assembled over here don't you find this is a clicks job rather than selecting or picking all the references whole match alignment no everything is taken care of with the help of interchange assembly right guys so this is all about interchange assembly now uh, let's say I have two parts one is my casting part and one is my machine part so how do you manage those parts again right for example let's say this is my casting part and I have to generate a machine component from this how do you do that so let's create from the scratch I'll say this is going to be a machine component and I'm going to use MMNS template now we do have a functionality called as merge inheritance now, in this merge er inheritance now this is as simple as normally how you assign how you assemble your part let's say this one new constraint this one and this one that's it so done and done so this is how I have imported I have actually copied all the references from my casting component now whatever changes you have to make you can make it on this which is not going to affect on your machine component let's say I, I need to add some rounds to it it's quite good 3M diameter fine let's say that there is a hole which is passing by uh, through and through hole fifteen mm hole with forty five distance right so this is uh, my machine component which I have derived from my casting component now let's have a look what happens to the casting component wow there is no there is not at all effect on the casting component right so normally what happens we save 
the part as a save as functionality and then reuse this part but if you make changes on one it gets effect on the other one the whole drawing everything we need to create from the scratch but here no need of doing that and the best part what ha this can even achieve with the save as option but whatever change you make on this on your casting component let's say this is 105 i'll make it to 150 regenerate i'll come back to my machine component i simply have to regenerate this one so there is a one way functionality whatever is change on the machine one is not going to replicate on your casting one so whatever it changes is there on the casting one will get affected on your the changes are applicable on your machine component so there is only one way functionality right so uh, this is this was a quite quick introduction about the ax right so what are the benefits you are going to get out of it whenever you deal with any complex or huge assemblies there is a single point of reference which is your skeleton and you can work on a concurrent design methodology so all the engineers will work on their unique parts and they will pull the references from uh, they will pull references from the skeleton right so f this will help you to improve your uh, design time you can reduce the design time you can reduce the failure you don't have to al always manage your keep on managing your references and whatever changes you make on a single point of time it will get replicated to all the subordinate you know uh, play, uh, parts or sub, sub assemblies right so uh, for the bottom of user normally we create those parts we call them on one place and then we assemble it it's a good practice but wherein if you have a proper project defined a structured project you can use this one so well thank you for today see you next time